أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number 296 Surah Al-Jinn وَأَنَّا ظَنَنَّا And we had thought أَلَّن تَقُولَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ That mankind and the jinn would never speak عَلَى اللَّهِ about Allah كَذِبَا any lie وَأَنَّا ظَنَنَّا Over here ظن gives the meaning of belief Why? Because it's being followed by an. That we used to believe that no person and no jinn would ever speak a lie about Allah. In other words, we thought whatever was said about Allah, such as that He has partners, attributing partners to Him, we thought all of this was true. I told you earlier that these jinn were who? Mushrikeen before. So they thought that whatever people were doing of shirk, whatever jinn were doing of shirk, all of this was true because no jinn, no human would ever lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believed in all of this shirk to be truth until we realized its untruthfulness. How? When we heard the Qur'an. So basically we see that the jinn, they are refuting their own thinking over here, their own false thinking. They're admitting their own faults. And this is something that is very great. That we were wrong. We used to think like this and we were wrong. Many times it happens that a person, you know, he used to think wrong about something. He had a misunderstanding about something and later on he comes to know of the truth. But when he comes to know of the truth, he realizes his foolishness and he never wants to mention it to people. That I used to do that or I used to think like this. So what does it show over here? That how the Qur'an changed them That they weren't shy to admit their faults They weren't shy to say that they were wrong This is how the Qur'an changed them Because it's important that a person realizes What his faults are, accepts them If he doesn't accept them Then how is he going to change? So the Qur'an gives you the courage to accept your fault وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ And there were men from mankind يَعُوذُونَ Who used to seek refuge بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِ In men from the jinn فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا So they only increased them in burden There were some rijal Rijal is the plural of rajul And remember the word rajul applies to a man It doesn't apply to a woman Some say that, look, Rajul is from Rijal, Rijal is foot, Rijal, Rajul is a person who stands on his feet. So it applies to a human being. So when Allah says, Ar-Rijalu Qawwamun, it means the one who can stand on his feet is the Qawwam, whether it's the man or the woman. No, this is incorrect. Rijal is used for who? Men and not women. What's used for women? Nisa. So, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالُ مِنَ الْإِنسِ There were rijal, men, from among human beings. What would they do? Ya'udhuna, they would seek refuge in who? Birijalim min al jinn. In some men from among the jinn. Which shows to us that there are jinn who are males as well as females. So people used to seek refuge in who? In the jinn. And when they would seek refuge in the jinn, What would this lead to? فَزَادُوهُمْ So they increased them. Who increased them? The people increased the jinn in rahaqa. What does rahaq mean? Rahaq has several meanings. Of them is that when something completely overtakes and overpowers the other from above by force. So when something overtakes the other, overcomes the other, and as a result causes it to suffer, oppresses the other, So, فَزَادُهُمْ رَهَقًا This increased them in their arrogance, in their sin, in their oppression, in their harming the people. And secondly, the word رَهَق is also used for rebellion, for arrogance, mischief, disobedience. So, فَزَادُهُمْ رَهَقًا They increased them in their rebellion, in their disobedience, in their arrogance. Now, what is this ayah talking about? What are these jinn saying? that the people used to seek refuge in the jinn. We learned that the Arabs, the mushrikeen, they had this custom. That for example, a person would be traveling with his family. And remember when you're traveling through the desert, you're traveling for many, many days. 
You're not just traveling for one evening, one morning, that's it. No, you're traveling for many days. So they would obviously have to camp somewhere during the day, during the night. And it's not necessary that you'll find people, you'll find a tribe, you'll find some population. So many times it would happen that people would end up camping at completely empty, deserted places. Now if you go to a place that's completely empty, deserted, aren't you going to be frightened? Yes, you would be. So the mushrikeen, what would they do? They would come to a place in order to camp over there, in order to settle over there. And they would say, I seek refuge with the master jinn of this valley from the jinns. I seek refuge with who? The master jinn of this valley from the jinns. Or that myself, my wealth, my children or my animals are harmed in it. So we seek refuge with who? With the lord jinn of this valley so that he can protect us. He can protect me, he can protect my family, he can protect my wealth, he can protect my animals, that none of us are harmed in any way. What is this? Shirk. Because we are to seek refuge with who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So the people would seek refuge with the jinn. Similarly they would say, I seek the protection of the Lord of this place against the evil of the insolent ones in it. So they would seek refuge in which jinn? The Lord, in the sense that the greatest one amongst them, the leader amongst them. Against who? Against the other jinn. That they would cause them harm. Similarly, the mushrikeen, when they would enter upon an oasis with their flocks, if in a place they ran short of water and food, they would go from that place to another, right? To a new oasis. So that they could feed their animals, they could pasture their animals over there. So whenever they would go to a new place, remember Arabs were Bedouins, many times they'd be traveling. So when they would settle in a new place, what would they do? Something very similar. That they would say over there, we seek refuge of the sustainer of this valley. So that we may live here in peace from every calamity. So just imagine, this is the kind of shirk that they used to commit. So when the people would seek refuge in the jinn like this, the jinn, فَزَادُوهُمْ rahaqa. This would increase them in their arrogance, in their rebellion, in their mischief. Imagine people seeking refuge with the jinn. The jinn would say that we have become lords of jinn and men. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made human beings superior. Isn't it so? The incident of the creation of Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the angels and Iblis prostrate. Why? To show the superiority of human beings. So when a human being says this to a jinn, I am seeking refuge with you, what is he doing? Humiliating himself. And the jinn becomes more arrogant that I have more power. Look, I have become the lord of the jinn and also of the men. Some have said that فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقَ Zadu, They over here refers to the jinn. So the jinn increase those people in what? In disobedience. When these people sought refuge in the jinn, what would the jinn do? They would increase them in their sinfulness, in their mischief, in their disobedience. Because remember, shaitan does not have any authority over who? The righteous servants of Allah. But when a person disobeys Allah, when a person does something wrong, then shaitan has authority over him. Remember that incident where a man, he was, it's mentioned in the book Talbis of Iblis, that a man, he, he was going somewhere and he saw a tree that people used to worship. So he got very upset and he said, I'm going to cut down this tree so that people don't do shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went to cut it down. He was very angry. Shaitan came to him and said, Why would you cut down this tree? Don't cut it. You know, people are going to oppose you, whatever. And he said, Don't cut it. You will fight two dinars every day. So that man said, Okay, fine. He agreed that I will not cut the tree as long as I get these two dinars every day. So next morning he found two dinars. He was very happy. He didn't go cut off the tree. The next day he didn't find any dinar. So he became upset that this man deceived me and he went to cut off that tree. When he went to cut that tree, that shaitan came and he managed to almost strangle him to death. He said, how come it is that earlier when I came you couldn't do anything to stop me? You only spoke to me, you didn't physically harm me and now you almost managed to kill me. He said, before when you came, you came with anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now you have come with another intention your iman is not as strong you came for the sake of the dinar when you have come for the sake of the money I have authority over you 
Remember, many times people are afraid of jinn, shayateen. They will harm me, they will do this to me, they will do that to me. If you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you stay away from wrong things, you recite the Qur'an, you recite your adhkar, you stay away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shayateen cannot harm you. They cannot harm you. When is it that shayateen can harm a person? When a person does something wrong. فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا The people used to seek refuge in the shayateen, and as a result, the shayateen would increase them in their wrongdoing. In their disobedience, in their sinfulness. فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقَ Now, if you think about it, many times people are afraid of the jinn. And this is why the mushrikeen of Arabia, what would they do? They would seek refuge in the jinn. In order to be safe from them. However, if you seek refuge in them in order to be safe from them, does that guarantee safety? No. It works the other way. فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقَ it works the other way. It does not guarantee your safety at all. What have we been told to do? That we should seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against every danger that we fear. And remember that ultimately all loss and harm happens with the will, with the permission of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No jinn can harm you, no human being can harm you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. This is why in every matter, in every danger, in every problem, who should a person turn to? Allah. Who should a person rely on? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no benefit in fearing the jinn. No benefit at all. Because remember, they cannot harm you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows. So if you are afraid, what should you do? Seek Allah's protection. And remember that if a person is afraid of the jinn, then the jinn frighten him even more. And if a person is not afraid, the shayateen, they also run away from him. It happens. There was this person that we know of who used to treat people if they were suffering from shayateen harassing them. And many times he would just say, I'm telling you, go away from here. Go. Leave. He would just say that to the jinn. And they would leave. They would leave. We think, oh my God, oh, scary. Don't think like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you superior. You don't need to be afraid of them. And be confident. You read the Qur'an, you have read your adhkab, you have taken protection by reciting the ayatul kursi. They cannot harm you. So don't be afraid. Be confident. And just say, leave, go away. I'm telling you. Like, you know, the Prophet sallallahu told us, when you see the snake, tell it to leave. Leave. And if it doesn't leave in three days, then you may kill it. It won't be able to harm you. So, the lesson that we learn over here is that a person must not be afraid of them. Rather, he should have confidence. And this confidence comes with what? Iman and ita'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We listen to the recitation. Riya'uhum min al-ins rabbana stamta'a ba'duna bi ba'din That we benefited from one another. We used one another. Some people, they try to capture jinn in order to use them for various mischievous purposes, such as black magic, right? taking revenge from other people, trying to harm innocent people. And in order to do all such things, like for example, to capture a jinn, a person has to offer sacrifice for the jinn. A person has to please the jinn somehow. Remember that story in which somebody shared about how this person, he was going to learn the Qur'an and you know, the people, they actually taught him how to be a magician. And they took off his clothes, put him in a closed dark room, gave him dates to eat only, and then they told him, you have to stay here for 40 nights. And then what happened? A jinn came to him. So in order to please a jinn, in order to use a jinn for something, what does a person have to do? Disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perform the most filthy actions. Dedicate himself to the jinn. And this makes the jinn more arrogant. It makes the jinn more rebellious. It doesn't make the jinn obedient to you. Because you cannot see the jinn. How do you know if the jinn is listening to you even or not? You do not know. So all such things are incorrect. All such things are incorrect because فَزَادُوهُمْ rahaqa. It makes the jinn more arrogant. So we see that the human beings and jinn, they have always interacted with one another. They are two different worlds, two different creations. 
However, they have always interacted with each other. And most of the times, this interaction has been based on what? Ta'awun ala al-ism, unfortunately. Because this is what is being mentioned over here. فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا That people either increased in the rahaq or the jinn increased in the rahaq. Ta'awun on good is something that is allowed, but ta'awun on ism is something that is not allowed. Just a few more things about ayah number six. That how the people used to seek refuge amongst the jinn when they were afraid, especially when they were traveling or when they came to a new place. What's the proper way of seeking refuge when a person comes to such a place? Like for example, a person goes to a new place, he is afraid. What should he do? If this is not right, then what should a person do? Did the Prophet ﷺ teach us something with regards to this? Yes, he did. We learn from a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that when one of you reaches a place, when one of you descends at a particular place, and he recites over there, أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّاتِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ Then nothing at all will harm him until he moves on from that place. So when a person goes to a new place, for example, you're traveling, you stop, let's say, at a hotel for a night or two, and you are afraid over there, then instead of remaining in that fear or doing something else, what should a person do? Recite the adhkar that the Prophet ﷺ taught. And what is that? أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق Do you know this? Everybody knows this? Okay, alhamdulillah. Now, the question is that jinn, do they harm people? Yes, they do. Are they able to harm people? Yes, they are. So what is the way of protecting yourself then? Yes, reciting the Mu'awwilatan, the surahs, which are, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ There are many ways of seeking protection. Amongst them is that first of all, whenever a person is afraid, sees something, hears something, feels something, then immediately seek refuge in Allah. Say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعِ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ That, O oh Allah, I seek your refuge against the shaytan. Similarly, a person must act upon all of the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Because we learn that when a person is disobedient, then what happens? Shaitan has power over him. And similarly, a person must leave all unlawful acts as well. So he should increase in his obedience and he should leave disobedience. If he does not pray, he should start praying regularly. If he lies, he should stop lying. Because obedience is what will protect you. Then we also see that a person must seek forgiveness for his sins as well. Because forgiveness is a means of protection. Mirfar. What is Mirfar? A helmet, right? And what does a helmet do? It protects you. So seeking forgiveness from sins is also a means of taking protection against the evil of shayateen. So basically one must purify himself spiritually. Then similarly a person must also physically keep himself clean. Keeping yourself clean physically. The magicians, those who work with the jinn, those who please the jinn, what do they do? They remain in filth And they perform extremely filthy actions Why? To please the jinn So what attracts the jinn, the shayateen Is filth And what repels them is what? Cleanliness This is why you see the Prophet ﷺ What did he instruct his companions? That when you go to bed Go in the state of wudu Because when you go in a state When you're clean When you have purified yourself Then the shayateen will stay away from you They cannot harm you You understand? Similarly, for the rest of the day as well, a person must try to keep himself clean. In Allah, you have the tawabina, you have the mutatahirin. Allah loves those people who stay clean. Then a person must also regularly recite the Quran, because regular recitation of the Quran is also a means of protection. Then saying the adhan or having someone else say the adhan that also chases the shaitan away. Isn't it so? When the adhan is pronounced, what happens to shaitan? He runs away, he goes away. Similarly, reading the masnoon du'as, which include the mu'awwadatan, as well as the ayatul kursi, reading the morning and evening adhkar, all of the adhkar that we have been taught, which are for protection. A person must also read the du'as before going to sleep, upon waking up, when leaving the house, as well as when entering the house. Similarly, when a person is eating, he should say bismillah. After eating, say alhamdulillah. When going to the washroom, using the washroom at that time also, say the dua. 
when exiting the washroom also say the dua. So basically, reciting all of the masnoon adka, what are they? A means of protection for us. Isn't it so? Because when a person remembers Allah, then he is fortified. And when a person does not remember Allah, when he does not seek refuge with Him, then he is in danger. And if a person hears something, or for example, he sees something, like for example, fire all of a sudden, ball of fire or light, or he feels something, let's say a person is sleeping, has a bad dream, wakes up, feels a lot of pressure on him. So things like this, at such events, what should a person do? Instead of screaming, instead of feeling afraid, he should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately. We learned that once the Prophet ﷺ, he was praying, and all of a sudden he said, أعوذ بالله منك أعوذ بالله منك I seek refuge with Allah against you. And he said it three times. And then he said, العنك بلعنة الله التامة I curse you with the complete curse of Allah. And he said that as well. And so the Sahaba, after the Salat, they asked the Prophet ﷺ, that today we heard you saying something that was very strange. What happened? So he said that as I was praying, Iblis came with the flame of fire to throw it at me. So as soon as I saw him, I said, أعوذ بالله منك three times. And then I said, العنك بلعنة الله التامة So because of that, Shaytan, Iblis, he retreated. Meaning he could not harm him. So it's quite possible somebody tells you, I saw something, I heard something, I feel something. It's possible you also feel like this because Shaytan tries to harass people. So in this situation, what should you do? Instead of screaming, instead of getting worried, be confident and look at the response of the Prophet and Look at how he reacted. Al-anuka bilaanatillah. You dare harm me? I curse you with the curse of Allah. You cannot harm me. Al-anuka bilaanatillah hitam. I curse you with the complete curse of Allah. And similarly, when it comes to children, a person must also be concerned about protecting them. So whenever you are with children, whether you're babysitting them for some time or they're your own children, pray for them, make dua for them, and also. Recite the proper adhkar for their protection. أُعِذُكَ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةٍ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّةٍ Similarly, we learned that the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever eats arjwa dates every morning will not be harmed by poison or witchcraft all that day until night comes. This is in Bukhari. So, eating dates as well. And especially arjwa dates. This is a means of protection. Now the question is that why are people afraid of the jinn? Why? What's the reason? Yes, so basically it's weakness of Iman. Weakness of Tawheed. Ignorance of Tawheed. Because when a person believes that all harm, all benefit, everything comes from Allah with the permission of Allah, and that all authority, power is with Allah, if I have read these adhkar, shaitan cannot harm me, then a person will not be afraid. So what's the reason behind people's fear? It's ignorance of Tawheed. Similarly, another reason for their fear is people feel insecure of what they have not seen. Why else are people so afraid of the jinn? Think about it. Are you afraid of the jinn? Were you ever at one point, at any point? Yes. Okay, lack of knowledge. Same thing, ignorance of Tawheed. What else? False, scary stories that are very, very common amongst people. People love to talk about such things. Anywhere girls sit, what do they talk about? Jinn and magic. And I know about this, and I saw this, and I heard this. So the spread of all of these made-up stories, this leads to fear. Similarly, when people watch horror movies, doesn't that develop fear? What's the point of such entertainment that doesn't let you rest, that doesn't let you sleep? What's the point of weakening your iman like this? Don't watch such stuff. Don't listen to such stories. Because this makes a person more afraid. Similarly, there are true cases, in fact, of magic or of jinn possession, right? There are true cases which you may have heard of, which you may have witnessed yourself. That also makes a person afraid. Now, what's the solution? The solution is that, first of all, a person must strengthen his tawheed. He must believe with conviction that anything that comes to a person is by the permission of Allah. We learn in Surah Yunus, قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ Then in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 76, قُلْ أَتَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفْعًا Who is the one who has ability to harm you, benefit you? Only Allah. In Surah Al-Fatih, قُلْ فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِنْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ ضَرًّا أَوْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ نَفْعًا 
Similarly in Surah Al-An'am, ayah number 17, we learn, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ In Surah Yaseen, ayah 23, إِن يُرِدْنِ الرَّحْمَانُ بِضُرٍ لَا تُغْنِ عَنِّي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُنْقِذُونَ In Surah Yunus, ayah 106, وَلَا تَدْعُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يَضُرُّكَ so the power to harm, the power to benefit is exclusively with who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These jinn cannot do anything except with the permission of Allah. So the first solution is that a person must strengthen his tawheed. Secondly, a person must also realize that the plot of shaitan is feeble. It is weak. Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 76, إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا The kaid of shaitan is weak. He cannot harm you. And also remember that shaitan cannot at all harm who? The obedient, the righteous servants of Allah. إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ المخلصين. So many times we learn in the Qur'an that the chosen servants of Allah, the righteous servants of Allah, shaitan cannot at all harm them. Then similarly, one must also be careful about narrating stories or listening to stories which have no benefit. Meaning, if... There is a story about the jinn or about magic which really doesn't benefit you, which doesn't benefit anyone. What's the point of narrating it? What's the point of listening to it? There is no benefit at all. Except that it only weakens your iman. We learned that once a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said that in my dream I saw that my head was cut off and rolled away. And I started running after it. So he had a scary dream. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him that لا تحدث الناس بتعلب الشيطان في منامك do not tell people about how the shaitan plays with you in your dreams. There's no need to tell other people about scary dreams, horror stories. There's no need to tell people about that. And a person must also have this confidence that there are angels who are guarding me, angels who are protecting me. Who is more powerful, the angel or shaitan? Angels are more powerful. When you go to bed, you recite Ayatul Kursi and angel is appointed to guard you. How can the shaitan harm you then? He cannot. And remember, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed guardian angels for a person, before him, behind him, protecting him from harm. Isn't it so? And these angels, they have shifts. They are angels who record the deeds and they are angels who are appointed to guard a person as well. So don't be afraid. There is no need to be frightened. And have confidence, have yaqeen. That when I read the Qur'an, when I have read these adhkaq, these shayateen cannot harm me. They cannot harm me at all. And have this conviction that you are superior than them. You are better than them. Allah has given you more aql. Allah has given you more ability, better ability. So there is no need to be frightened of them. And always remember that Sulaiman had authority over the jinn. The jinn didn't have authority on any person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Iblis... He commanded Iblis to prostrate to Adam. Not that Allah commanded Adam السلام, to prostrate to Iblis. No, it wasn't the other way around. So be confident. And inshallah this fear will eventually go away. And the thing is that if a person is busy with important things, then he doesn't have time to talk about such things or be distracted by such things. So the best thing is that be busy with important things. Okay, let's continue. Ayah number 7. وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ And they had thought, كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ Just as you thought, أَلَّنْ يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا That Allah would never send anyone at all. Who is saying this? This ayah can be understood in two ways. That first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that وَأَنَّهُمْ That indeed the jinn, ظَنُّوا They thought, كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ Just as you people have been thinking. So the jinn, used to think exactly the way you had been thinking that Allah will never raise anyone. What does it mean by this? That first of all, Allah will not resurrect anyone. There will be no resurrection. So the jinn also had this corrupted belief. Or there are amongst the jinn who have this corrupted belief that there is no resurrection. And secondly, that Allah will never send anyone as a messenger. So just as you were thinking that Allah will never send a messenger, similarly the jinn used to think as well that Allah will never send any messenger. Secondly, وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ This is a continuation of the speech of the jinn. That they are 
telling their people about who? About human beings. That the people, ظنوا, they think, كما ظننتم, just as you think. They had the same belief just as you had this wrong belief that Allah will never resurrect anyone or that Allah will never send any messenger. So basically in this ayah, what do we learn? That both the jinn and men had corrupt beliefs. And many still have till today. Corrupt beliefs with regards to the hereafter, with regards to the coming of the messengers. And these corrupt beliefs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has corrected them how? By sending the Qur'an. وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ And we have sought to reach the sky. Lamasna From the root letters, lam mim seen, lams. And lams is to touch something by hand. Mas is also to touch and lams is also to touch. But lams is in particular to search for something as well. To search for something how? By feeling with the hand. By touching with the hand. So, وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ We sought to reach the sky. We desire to go up to the sky. Why? In order to go and listen. In order to go and eavesdrop. فَوَجَدْنَاهَا But we found it. We found the sky. مُلِئَتْ It was filled up. It was filled up with who? حَرَسًا شَدِيدًا Very powerful guards. And also وَشُهُبَا And burning flames. Now this was something very strange. The jinn would regularly go up to the skies in order to listen to the conversations of the angels. However, once when they went, and this was at the time when the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a messenger, when revelation was being sent to him, when they went up to the skies, they found that the skies were filled up with haras and shadid and washuhuba. Now this was something very strange. This is what got them worried that what's going on? Something serious is happening. Which is why, as I mentioned to you earlier, that the leaders of the jinn, they told them, go and search throughout the earth and try to figure out what's going on. And they came upon the Prophet ﷺ then, reciting the Qur'an, and they figured out that it was because of this, that there was such strict guarding in the skies. Now, they mentioned that they found the sky muli'at, filled with haras and shadid. And haras is the plural of haris. And haris is a guard. Basically in the word harus, you get two meanings. One is guarding something and secondly it also gives a meaning of time. So haris is a guard that looks after and protects something for a specific period of time. For a specific period of time. So haras and shadidan, mighty guards, strong guards, and who are they? This was angels. Angels in the sky, imagine, as guards, was shuhuba. Shuhub is the plural of shihab from the root letter shin haba and shihab is used for that in which is flame as well as light and therefore the word shihab applies to a star and it also applies to flame of fire it applies to stars and also flame of fire we learn in surah al-mulk ayah 5 wa laqad zayyanna as-samaa'a ad-dunya bi masabiha wa ja'alnaha rujuman lish-shayateen what it is the stars that are rujum then similarly in Surah Al-Safat, Ayatan, we learn, إِلَّا مَنْ خَطِفَ الْخَطْفَةَ فَأَتْبَعُهُ شِهَابٌ سَاقِبٌ That the jinn who manages to hear something, snatch something, then what happens to him? He is pursued by a burning flame. So it applies to a flame and also, and also star. So they found in the sky angel guards that are very mighty and at the same time flames as well. So this is why they were wondering that what's going on. And they said, وَأَنَّا كُنَّا نَقْعُدُ مِنْهَا And we used to sit therein. We used to sit where? مِنْهَا Meaning therein, in the sky. Where? مَقَاعِدَ At certain sitting places. مَقَاعِدَ is a plural of مَقَعَد And what is مَقَعَد? Place of sitting. فِي مَقَعَدِ صِدْقٍ عِنْدَ مَلِيكٍ مُقْتَدِرٍ So what is مَقَعَد? A seat. A place where a person is sitting. So we used to go up to the sky and sit in certain places. Why? summary For the purpose of listening. So just imagine they had fixed their places even. That this is where we sit so that the angels cannot see us. This is where we sit so that we can hear in the best way. وَأَنَّا كُنَّا نَقْعُدُ مِنْهَا مَقَاعِدَ لِسَّمْرِ And we could easily go and eavesdrop before. 
However, فَمَنْ يَسْتَمِعِ الْآنَ But whoever listens now, يَجِدْ لَهُ شِهَابَ الرَّصَدَ He finds for himself a flame in ambush. Shihab, a flame, and rasada from the root letters, رَصَدَ رَصَدَ يَرْصُدُ is to lie in wait for someone to come, so that as soon as they come, you can attack them. So it is basically to lie in wait, in ambush. So, as soon as a jinn goes up now to listen, he finds over there Shihab al Rasada waiting to strike him, ready to strike him. So, in other words, before we could go and listen very easily, now there's no way we can go. Why is it so that there was so much strict guarding up in the skies? Because the Quran was being revealed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He was revealing the Quran, He made sure that it was protected, meaning it was revealed in the way that he intended it to, so that no shaitan could interrupt it, no shaitan could possibly alter it. We learn in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, Ayah 210-212, that وَمَا تَنَزَّلَتْ بِهِ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُمْ وَمَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ إِنَّهُمْ عَنِ السَّمْعِ لَمَعْزُولُونَ That the devils, they have not brought this revelation down. It is not even allowable for them, nor would they be able to. Indeed, they from its hearing are removed. They are even removed from hearing the Qur'an, from hearing that revelation. So, the ma'zulun how? That when they go up to the sky, they cannot listen to anything over there now. So much protection, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself has taken a promise, which is that, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ That Allah Himself has taken responsibility to guard the Qur'an, to preserve the Qur'an. And this, He fulfilled at the time when the Qur'an was being revealed, at the time when it was being taught by the Prophet to the people, when it was being recorded, and when it was being transmitted from generation to generation, up until today and even afterwards. Because Allah has promised that He will preserve this book. So this is why all of this guarding was being done up in the skies. The jinn said, وَأَنَّا لَا نَدْرِي And we do not know. Nadri from Diraya. We had no idea. أَشَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ whether evil is intended for those on earth, am arada bihim rabbuhum rashada, or whether their Lord intends for them a right course. Meaning we have no idea what's going on. Is something evil going to happen, or is something good going to happen? Because they could not go and listen. Before, they could go and listen, right, to what the angels were speaking about. And from that they could figure out, okay, something evil is going to happen, okay, something good is going to happen. But now when they would go up, they couldn't even listen to a little bit. So, لا ندري أشرن أشرن is Hamza, istifham, and then Sharrun, whether some evil, Urida, it was intended. And notice how Majhul is being used. It hasn't been said whether Allah intended evil for people. But rather what has been said, whether evil was intended. Why? Because it's out of etiquette that a person must not ascribe evil directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we had no idea whether evil was intended for those on the earth. Am arada bihim rabbuhum rashada. We had no idea, but we did know that this was something serious. Something serious was going on. Now what does this ayah show to us? That the jinn do not have the knowledge of the unseen. They have no idea what's going to happen in the future. They don't know. And for them to come to know of something even, they have to adopt some means. For example, go up and listen to the conversation of the angels. So they don't have the knowledge of the unseen. Remember Sulaiman when he passed away, did the jinn know he died? No, they didn't know for so long. It's mentioned in Surah Saba. So a person must have this confidence that they don't know the unseen. They don't know what I'm thinking. They don't know what I'm going to do. So why should I be afraid of them? وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الصَّالِحُونَ And among us are the righteous. وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ And among us are others not so. كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَدًا We are of divided ways. This is what the jinn said amongst themselves as well. That amongst us are those who are صَالِحُونَ Those who are righteous. Meaning, amongst us are those who have become righteous after having listened to the Qur'an. That we have become believers. Because they said to their people when they went to them, that we have heard, سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا So when they went and told the rest of the jinn, we have heard the Qur'an, they also told them that we have believed. So, أَنَّا مِنَّ الصَّالِحُونَ Amongst us are those who have become righteous. We did bad things before, but we don't do them anymore. We have done tawbah. We don't do those bad things anymore. 
Or we can understand this in another way. وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الصَّالِحُونَ That there are amongst us those who are righteous, meaning believers, followers of the truth from before. وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ And amongst us are other than that. Notice how they don't say those who are evil, those who are mushrik, those who are munafiq, kafir. No. دُونَ ذَلِكَ Other than that. It shows how respectful they are in their speech. That look at how when they were praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they spoke of Allah. وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا مَتَّخَذَ صَاحِبَةً وَلَا وَلَدَا The one who is evil, they condemned the one who is evil. سَفِيهُنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ شَطَطَ And then over here, وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكَ And amongst us are other than that. كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَدًا We are of divided ways. طَرَائِقَ is a plural of طَرِيقَ And طَرِيقَ is from the root letters طَرَاقَ and tariqa literally means a path And the word doesn't just apply to a path or a road But it also applies to the culture of a people The deen of a people Their thinking, their lifestyle Their rituals, their practices, their habits You understand? It's not just limited to just one thing But rather it applies to the culture, the religion The lifestyle, thinking, rituals, practices Habits, norms, values whether they are good or bad, all of this is included in tariqah. And qidad is a plural of qidda. Qidda. Qiddatun. Qaf dal dal. And what does that mean? Different, diverse. So, kunna tara'iqa qidada, meaning we are of different types, different nations. So just as human beings are of different types, belonging to different nations, there are jinn as well who belong to different nations. You understand? There are people who speak different languages. Similarly, amongst the jinn are also those who speak different languages. Similarly, amongst people are those who follow a particular religion, who have a particular lifestyle, which varies from the rest of the people. Amongst the jinn are also followers of different religions. Amongst people are Hindu, Sikh, Muslims, Christians, Jewish. Similarly, amongst the jinn, same divisions. So, kunna tara'iqa. وَأَنَّا غَنَنَّا And we have become certain غَنَنَّا أَلَّن Notice غَن is being followed by أَن So what does this mean? We have become certain So now we have become certain We have this yaqeen That أَلَّن نُعْجِزَ اللَّهَ فِي الْأَرْضِ That we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth We can never ever cause any failure to Allah on earth that we went up to the skies, we tried to listen, we could not listen. That showed to us our inability, our weakness before Allah. So now we are very certain that we cannot cause any failure to Allah on this earth. نُعْجِزَهُ And never ever can we escape Him. How? Haraba by flight. Harab from the root letters, Haraba. And harab is to flight, to escape, to run away. And it's basically when a mujrim, when a criminal runs away in order to save himself, in order to escape. So we know now for sure, we cannot outrun Allah on this earth and we cannot even escape Him by fleeing, by trying to go up to the skies. Because where can we go? Where can we go? Now we are certain that we cannot at all defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Rahman, Ayah 33, we learn, يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَنْ تَنْفُذُوا مِنْ أَقْطَارِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَانْفُذُوا لَا تَنْفُذُونَ إِلَّا بِسُلْطَانِ And then the jinn said, وَأَنَّا لَمَّا سَمِعْنَا الْهُدَى And when we have heard the guidance, آمَنَّا بِهِ We have believed in it. Now that we have heard the guidance, and what does Al-Huda refer to over here? The Qur'an. آمَنَّا بِهِ We have believed in it. We affirm that it is from Allah. فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِرَبِّهِ So whoever believes in his Lord, فَلَا يَخَافُ بَخْسًا وَلَا رَهَقًا He will not fear any deprivation nor any burden. The one who believes in his Lord, he will not fear any بَخْس or any رَهَق. What does بَخْس mean? Loss, reduction. So his good deeds... His reward will never be reduced. No, Allah will not cause him such loss. If he's done good, he will be rewarded for it. And rahaq, rahaq, oppression, injustice. What would injustice be? That he is punished for something that he has not done. Or that evil is written for him when he has not committed that evil. So the one who believes in his Lord, 
He does not need to fear any loss nor any injustice. No. The one who believes, the one who is upright, Allah will reward him. Allah will not punish him unnecessarily. But rather Allah will reward him. What a simple belief they have. A clear aqidah. It's not too complicated. Very simple, straightforward. We've heard the guidance, we have believed in it. Now we are certain we can never ever outsmart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can never defeat Him in His plans. And we know now that this is the truth. And the one who believes, he does not need to have any fear. Rather he should be confident that Allah will appreciate him for his good. وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ And among us are Muslims. Muslimun meaning those who have submitted to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ And among us are also those who are unjust. قَاسِطُون Plural of قَاسِط What's the root? قَاف سِينْ طَا Any other word from the same root? قِسْط What does that mean? And over here we're translating this word as those who are unjust. How? Why? Because the mustar is different. Remember that قِسْط is from باب نصرة. قَسَطَ يَقْسُطُ نَصَرَ يَنْصُرُ Then it gives the meaning of justice. But the word قَسُط which is the mustar of this word قَسُط This is from باب ضَرَبَ قَسَطَ يَقْسِطُ That gives the meaning of injustice. ظُلْم Deviation. So amongst us are those who have submitted and amongst us are those who are unjust. What does it mean by unjust? Who do ظُلْم on themselves? How? By not submitting. فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ So whoever has submitted to Allah فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّوْ رَشَدًا Those have sought out the right course. Those who have become Muslim have sought out the right course. تَحَرَّوْ is from تَحَرِّي which is from the root letters حَرَيَا حَرِيُّن تَحَرِّي And تَحَرِّي is to look for the best and most suitable option and then also adopt it afterwards. You know, one behavior is that a person says, you know, whatever I find, I don't care, I'm just going to take it. Like for example, a person goes to a grocery store, they're looking for a particular food item, and they say, I don't care, I'm not going to bother with the ingredients, I'm just going to take it. Another person is very careful about what he eats, what he puts in his mouth. Is it halal? Is it haram? Is it tayyib? Is it khabiz? So what do they do? They will go... And spend some time looking at the ingredients of each and every option available. Isn't it so? And they will check, okay, this is the fat content, okay, this is the processed food content, this is halal or is it haram? They will not just say, oh, these weird names, these weird codes, they don't make any sense to me, so ignore it. No. They will check, they will write down the name, they will call on that number and ask, what is this? They will do all the research that what am I putting in my mouth? So one person is he who settles for less, just out of convenience. And the other is he who chooses, who looks for the best option. This is what tahari is. You understand? The person who is looking for the best available option, the most suitable option. This is what tahari is. So in other words, tahari is the struggle to find the truth. The struggle to search the truth. So the one who has submitted to Allah, the one who has become Muslim, then that person has taharro, they have struggled to search the truth, they have found it, and they have also accepted it. Taharro rashada, they have found rashad. They were seeking rashad, they have found it, they got what they wanted. And this is very true. When a person wants guidance, does Allah show him the way? Yes, He does. And if a person does not want guidance, does not bother, is okay with whatever is available to him, does not put in the effort, then Allah also leaves him. Who does Allah guide? The person who wants guidance. So, فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّوا رَشَدَا وَأَمَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ And as for those who are unjust, فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا They will be for hell, firewood. That just as amongst the people, those who accept guidance, they are rightly guided. Allah increases them in guidance. And those who deviate from the truth, then what happens to them? They are punishable in this dunya and the hereafter. And in the hereafter, فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا They will become fuel of the hellfire. 
Notice the word hatab. What does hatab mean? Firewood, fuel. So just as there are people who will be waqood of hellfire, amongst the jinn are also those who will be the fuel of hellfire. We listen to the recitation. وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ أَن لَّن يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ فَوَجَدْنَاهَا مُلِئَتْ حَرَسًا Mention the correct beliefs that they have developed now. That now we have become certain that we cannot defeat Allah. We cannot outsmart Him. We cannot escape Him. So this is also very important. This is part of the hadith of ni'mah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Guidance is also what? A huge blessing. And talking about this blessing means that a person shares with others how his thinking has been corrected, how his thinking has improved, how his beliefs have improved. And this is why, for example, when we have these group meetings and we ask you, that how has the Qur'an changed you, affected you, impacted you, you share with other people because this is part of the hadith of Nirma. Because you see over here, jinn are discussing amongst themselves. This is what we used to think we were wrong. Now we believe this. And it's also an excellent way of doing da'wah. An excellent way of sharing with other people as well. Anything else you'd like to say before we finish? Any comment? You said that uh, people who have strong iman Jinn cannot harm them. Shaitan cannot harm them. Sheikh Muhammad Al Arif was mentioning that once he was with Sheikh Bin Baz, and then they went somewhere, and someone was affected by jinn. And then they tried to take the jinn out so much, the jinn refused to completely to come out. There were two shukhs, Afifi and Bin Baz. And Sheikh Bin Baz get angry, say, Why can't you affect us then? He said, No, I'm scared of you. Yes, it's true. They are afraid. This is just like amongst people also. There are those who fear people of knowledge. Isn't it so? Like for example, they will see them and they will not have the confidence to go up to them or even greet them or you know, shake their hands because they have lore. Isn't it so? So similarly, the jinn are also afraid. The jinn also become afraid of those people who are strong in their iman. It doesn't mean that a person must become rude and harsh. No. When you strengthen in your iman, when you increase in your ibadah, then Allah gives you lore. We listen to the recitation. وَأَنَّا ظَنَنَّا أَلَّا تَقُولَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ 